Next on the star-studded Broadway profiles, David Allen Greer, Blair Underwood, Jerry O'Connell, and the rest of the stars of A Soldier's Play. Plus, we're on the red carpet for opening night of Jagged Little Pill. Hear from Alanis Morissette and Diablo Cody, the creators of Broadway's hottest new musical. And Laura Linney dishes on her new solo show, My Name is Lucy Barton. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is Broadway Profiles. Welcome to Broadway Profiles, I'm Tamsin Fidel. We're here atop the Renaissance Hotel overlooking Times Square, and we're gonna kick things off with a soldier's play. This Pulitzer Prize winning play is on a segregated army base during World War II, and right now it's one of Broadway's most star-studded shows. Soldier's play basically is a murder mystery. It's a whodunit, you gotta find out who committed this crime. 1944, Louisiana set at Fort Neal, Louisiana. So, I mean, you're dealing with, the, you know, the dynamics of every race relations, you're dealing with the South, and that's Captain Davenport's job to find out who did it, um, to follow, truly follow the facts, not fake news, not, not assumptions, but follow the facts. And they, they end up taking him places that uh, are very unexpected. It's about race relations in the U.S. Army in the early to mid-1940s. And spoiler alert, things were not so good. I think this play deals with facts. It deals with what it means to be an American. It deals with the ultimate sacrifice, you know, uh, your life. Uh, so what does that really mean? So I think it's a very timely play as well. A good play sparks conversation, meaning you talk about it long after the play is done, at dinner, at drinks, telling your friends. Um, that feeling of excitement and discovery stays with you. There are gaspy moments in this play, gaspy moments. We're taking this very seriously. We know we're, um, we know we're working on something real important. Jagged Little Pill just celebrated opening night on Broadway. On the red carpet, we got to talk to the women who created this musical, Alanis Morissette and Diablo Cody. Take a look. I think there's a permission giving for people to be human, you know, whether it's our rage or our vulnerability or our depression or our anxiety or our terror, whatever it is. There's this invitation that that's just part of being human and we, you're not alone. You know, and I, I think what I love about, I mean, I love many things about this musical, but Diablo Cody pulled the, the characters out of the songs. So there's this cohesive kind of intertwining between the music and the book, which blows my mind. Alanis, like, I didn't know what her involvement was going to be. Right. You know, because it, it, with shows like this, you never know. You know, I thought maybe, maybe she'll be super involved and maybe she'll just come to the opening. Right. She has been a full-blown super involved member of the creative team and such an incredible fairy godmother for our show and just everything that I dreamed she would be a more. I think Alanis is truly just a really deep em empath. She's a really deep empath and I think she just gets to the heart of things in a way that most people aren't able to. And I think she's so unapologetic, so raw that that really excites people. She's so honest. She tells the truth. She's fearless. She just speaks about what it's like to be, you know, in her own human experience and the more specific she is, the more we relate. And I think that's, you know, the ironic thing. It, it, it's, it's really, really, really cool and I'm so grateful. Oh God, it's really cool. Oh God, I can't be doing this crying stuff. No, oh. but I'm so thankful to tell this story specifically because this story is gonna mean so much to people. It already does. She is a four-time Tony nominee, but for the first time, Laura Linney is taking the Broadway stage all by herself. Beth Stevens from the Broadway.com team caught up with Laura to talk about My Name is Lucy Barton. Laura, you seem to like to challenge yourself. That's <laughs> true, I do. <laughs> Yeah, I'd seen one-person shows in the past, and I never in my wildest dreams thought I would ever do one. I'm very glad I have. I'm very glad it's this play. I love this material. I love the people who created it. So for people who have not read the book, how do you explain this, this story? It's basically the story of a mother and a daughter, but it's really more the story of a woman who learns to take agency over herself. And she comes from very, very poor beginnings. And she is in the hospital with her mother, and they have a talk. 
for a few days. What about this story struck you as theatrical? Because it's first person addressed to an audience, so the voice in the book is a narrator talking to you, the reader, and in that way to turn it into a, a performance piece for one actor was really easy. Then the only thing that you then had to find a solution to was how do you make the mother vivid on stage as well. And then fortunately what you do is you just cast Laura Linney who can transform herself like a shaman into another character and just do that. It gets into the universality of the pain of all of us growing up and what that is. So when you have a foundation like that and you have language as beautiful as this, and you have a situation that has urgency and challenge and interesting personalities you know, sort of bringing it to life, it becomes theatrical. You don't see writing like this very often in this format, adapted from a novel. And I also love it because it's not, it's not a typical type of theatrical experience. It unfolds on its own pace, it resonates deeply, it's um, very stealth in how it affects you. So it's just, it's just something very, very different. There is no doubt about it. We love when Broadway hits the big screen. Now, for the first time, we've gotten a look at the trailer for In the Heights, the movie. Before we get to that, I've got to tell you that In the Heights is the first musical from Lin-Manuel Miranda. The Tony and Grammy Award winner ran on Broadway from 2008 to 2011. And of course, it's the precursor to Lin's worldwide blockbuster, Hamilton. And just like the Broadway musical, the movie is an immigrant story set in Washington Heights in Upper Manhattan. The people that I know They're talking about kicking out all the dreamers. But every day is different, so it's time to make some noise. It's hard to believe it has been 25 years of Disney on the Broadway stage, and over those years, we've had a chance to enjoy some magical shows, including Beauty and the Beast, The Little Mermaid, and of course, Aladdin. Aladdin opened on Broadway in 2014, and it's still going strong. We went behind the scenes with the man who plays the genie, Major Attaway. You have Disney magic in itself. You add that to the prestige that comes with Broadway and then it's enhanced by the fact that Disney goes over and above for everything, right? They're ready to enhance every part of your imagination. So you take all of those things and you put that on a stage telling a Disney story and it's like, there's nothing that can top it. We have the lights, we have the, the glitter, we have the, the costumes, we have hand-beaded uh, costumes, Swarovski crystals, you know, um, the, the fabric is one of a kind. All of it is purchased in the world just for this show, right? We use it for the show until it runs out. That's how unique the magic is. You know, everything is on purpose, deliberately amazing. My version of the genie is based off of Fats Waller and Cab Calloway. So we're mixing in, um, you have some stand-up comedian energy and you have from Robin Williams and you also have a uh, vaudeville type energy that's added into that and then you mix that with the jazz that Alan Menken has done to the music and that, that's really what you get. Let's keep talking about it because the actor who plays Jafar has owned that role for a long, long time. He's the man who voiced Jafar in the original Disney cartoon 28 years ago and now he's reprising that role on the Broadway stage. We got a look at what it takes to transform into that character every single night. My whole life, and this is no lie, I wanted to play a Disney villain since I was really a kid. The really big ones of, of operatic scale, like, um, well, Captain Hook, Maleficent, Stromboli. I just liked them all. Lady Tremaine, you know, it didn't matter. Men, women, they were all interesting to me because without a good villain, you don't really have a good story. The first time I read the script, I was like, this is not called Aladdin, it's called Jafar. He's just, I think, pure evil. It's not at all like who I really think I am, but it's so appealing to get to play it. It's so much fun. It's just about focusing, especially after six years. It's just about focusing and remembering like what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. It's been a very interesting journey spending 28 years with an imaginary character.
Don't go anywhere because when we come back, it's the Real Housewives of Broadway. Reality TV star Erica Jane moves from Beverly Hills to Chicago as Broadway's new Roxy Hart. Plus, it's the circle of life. A Broadway couple finds each other all thanks to the Lion King. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and you're watching Broadway Profiles. The Lion King is one of the longest running shows in Broadway history. It's a one of a kind musical and it is still going strong. 22 years on the New York City stage plus worldwide performances. This show has been seen by nearly 100 million people in 20 countries. But some of the best stories about this record setting Broadway run are all about the relationships. In fact, I can tell you about one couple who found each other because of this incredible show. I came in America during apartheid in South Africa when it's still we were not free. The way we were received here, it was amazing, you know, to come here in America and people just embraced us. I've been in the Lion King for 22 years now, believe it or not, uh, which is amazing, you know, for me. When people come in and know we rehearse the show, it feels like no again. I started doing the show in Germany, then I came over to New York and then I met her. So it did start as just a friend or a colleague and then which grew into a relationship, of course. What happened is he wanted to know about the city and I will always offer you know, to go and show him around. Oh, so, <laughs> <laughs> and then we have a young one together. For me, seeing her coming and see the show and we both in the show, like I remember w when we heard her voice saying, Daddy, you know, we're like, oh my God. We grew up in a system whereby we were not able to see theaters. All those things were not, were not available. allowed, were not available to us. If she chooses to follow on our footstep, um, she's going to have a much be better path than we did. We know her as one of the real housewives of Beverly Hills, but now Erica Jane is about to be the new Roxy Hart in Chicago. Paul Wontorek from Broadway.com had a chance to sit down and talk to her about it. So Roxy Hart is an iconic Broadway character. What do you love about her? Why, why was this role really attractive to you? Because it's the shadow. It's getting to play with the shadow part of your psyche. I mean, this is a real delve into all the dark parts of humanity that, you know, we really don't celebrate, we try to suppress. And Roxy's is very much present. She kills a guy because she wants her own show. I mean, it's pretty amazing. She's delusional in a great way. Yeah. It's interesting how actresses can sort of put their own mark on it. That's what's so fantastic about this show. You know, everyone can really make it their own. Well, I think you should. I don't think you should play it like anyone else yeah. because everybody has something different inside to bring to the character. I'm just excited to have this opportunity and to be there and be on stage. And I know I'm going to cry, but you know, it's, it's, it's a great thing. Yeah, so it's really emotional for sure. you. Sure. Is, is it sort of like tap into like the little girl dreams? And... Absolutely, 100%. This is like a full circle moment. I think it is for any of us who grew up dreaming of, you know, being on Broadway or being in showbiz or any of that. Anything that makes you nervous about it? So I, of course, I'm, I'm in like I'm crawling out of my skin. I want to give the best Roxy that I know how, give a great, clean, fun show, inhabit the character totally 100% and have a good time. That's really what it's about. Yes. And are you excited for people who only know you from Real Housewives to get to see this other side of, of you? Of course. And yeah. that's what I think is so cool is that people know me one way, now they get to see me another way. Yeah. I am just over the moon. We've talked about a lot, but there's still a lot more to talk about on this edition of Broadway Profiles. It's a fan favorite, that's for sure, but this ghoulish musical is set to say goodbye. Can Beetlejuice rise from the dead? We'll talk about all of it when we come back. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and you're watching Broadway Profiles. Beetlejuice on Broadway is selling more tickets than it ever has before, but the big question is, does it still have a ghost of a chance? This Tony-nominated musical has announced it's leaving the Winter Garden Theater in June, but right now fans are fighting to save the show. We talked to one of the show's stars, Leslie Kritzer. Beetlejuice is really special. 
and something about it has resonated. We've just exploded all over social media. Our album has, you know, ever since we released it, we have over 100 million streams, which is crazy. I mean, I've never been a part of something so big. Welcome to a show about death. The opening number is, again, that's a moment where I saw it for the first time with all the visuals, with all the artwork and the projections and the cast and the costumes. You know, seeing Sophia walk out there for the first time. I get chills just thinking about it because it is so, it's such an iconic moment. All we want to do is hear that sound. All we want to do is hear that sound. Fellas! All we want to do is hear that sound. All we want to do is hear that sound. I still can't believe that I have girls that are dressing up as Delia and Miss Argentina. And they're dressing up as Lydia and Beetlejuice. You kind of go, wow, is this real? Like they love it that much? And that following, that connection with the fans, with our audiences, everyone appreciates the show and they it brings them a lot of happiness. They feel seen. There is lots and lots of news breaking on Broadway all the time. Let's go ahead and send it back to Paul Wontork with your Broadway.com Minute. Hi, Paul. Hi, Tamsin. Let's run down some of the biggest stories that have Broadway buzzing. Michael Jackson will hit the boards next summer. MJ, a musical featuring the songs of the music icon, will be written by two-time Pulitzer Prize winner Lynn Nottage and directed and choreographed by Tony winner Christopher Wielden. Taking on the enormous task of portraying the late king of pop is Broadway favorite Ephraim Sykes, who can currently be seen as Temptations member David Ruffin in Ain't Too Proud, a role that earned him a Tony nomination, a Grammy nomination, and a Broadway.com Audience Choice Award. A dazzling triple threat, Sykes definitely has got the goods to pull this one off. MJ starts July 6th at the Neil Simon Theater. The Devil Wears Prada is the next film hit to make its way to the stage. Elton John is writing a score for the upcoming musical Take with lyrics by rising songwriter Shayna Taub and a script from one of the funniest men alive, Paul Rudnick. Although it doesn't launch until summer of 2021 in Chicago, director Anna D. Shapiro has announced her leading ladies. Taking on Meryl Streep's iconic role of fashion mag editor Miranda Priestly is Tony Award winner Beth Level, with Taylor Amon Jones as aspiring journalist Andy Sachs and Hathaway on screen. Trust me, everyone in town is looking forward to this one. Finally, here's some amazing news for 18,000 young New Yorkers. Aaron Sorkin's hit adaptation of Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird will perform at Madison Square Garden for one amazing night, February 26th, as a free performance for a stadium full of New York City public school students. No Broadway show has ever played the world-famous arena in history, so this is an incredible first. That's it for me. To get all the biggest buzz every day, visit Broadway.com. Sadly, Broadway is saying goodbye to one of our best-loved musicals and one of our favorite songs. At Waitress, the diner is closed. Did it finally remind her to fight just a little? To As Waitress leaves Broadway, we wanted to give you a last taste from one of the great Waitress stars, Katherine McPhee. But you Dear Evan Hansen just celebrated three years at the Music Box Theater, and we had a chance to talk to the two women who play the moms in this Tony Award winning musical. The first time I ever sat and saw the show at the Music Box, I was sitting next to a family with a 16 year old daughter, and they very obviously had reached that place in their relationship where they weren't communicating anymore. But this was a show that she wanted to see because she knew the cast recordings, so they wanted to see it, and so they saw it. The mother was giving me all this information. I, I'm like, oh, okay. But just for having viewed it together, a healing, a softening occurred between them. It was really incredible to, to witness that. Yeah, I can see that actually during the finale. During the finale, the, the stage lights up and we can actually see the audience and I can look out and I remember specifically on the road looking out one day and there was a, a teenage boy and he was very emotional and his mom was sitting next to him and without even breaking eye contact she just reached across <gasps> and that patted his yeah. arm and I just, just started <laughs> I just lost it I was like oh. 
But there it is. It's yeah. the connection between um, family members, parents, and children that I think you know um, it, this can be a really, a really healing. Um, experience for them. I'm a different mom than Heidi is and yet I've had all of the same feelings that she has. As parents we're always go, oh I ruined them for life. Yeah. I, I that's it. I sent them into therapy and it doesn't and right. here's that. where they're, they're sitting they're still it's like we're gonna be okay. I know this seems like a big deal but trust me we're gonna be okay and I'm not going anywhere. And that is gonna do it for us. Until next time, I'm Tamsin Fidel, and you're watching Broadway Profiles.